Okay. Uh, hope you enjoy the lunch and not falling asleep now. Um, my name is Kanda. I'm talking about um, Isinga. I'm coming from Germany, Bavaria, Nuremberg. Um, the agenda, I will say a little bit about Isinga, the project is the history we have about the, the platform we use at the moment, um, what's new, and then I hopefully have a working demo um, for upcoming um, Isinga 2, and hopefully fit everything in 25 minutes, that will be the biggest challenge. Um, Isinga is um, a team we started, Isinga, I think, we were only one foreign guy, not German, was an Austrian guy. We started with seven or eight people. Um, now we're an international team working on it. We're, we're forking we in 2009. Um, there were various reasons why we did this. Four, four, four. Four. After the fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't think about it. Yeah. Um, there were a couple of reasons um, why we forked it. Um, trademarks, and, uh, but, but the most of it was um, that we had a lack of development in, in Argus. And what we see today, Argus really goes totally different ways. Um, what we think open source is that a couple of weeks ago they changed the license model that is not allowed to fork anymore than Argus Core, which is true, we can read it. Um, yeah, I don't know what they think open source is. But so this, this gives really us an impression we want to do something new. And all the people working in the Singer project were long time Nagus users, so we don't we don't hate Nagus, we, we love it. It's, it's so easy in many ways, and so we decided to take that source code out of it and um, <coughs> starting development. So we we think we are successful the last years. We have um, growing downloads and source code to change a little bit because a lot of people using the packages and the distros, so we don't have a good detail how many people using Isinga, and we don't have a call in home functionality like Nago says. <coughs> um, but um, yeah, we're happy with it. Sorry? Yeah, in the starting screen, it's a, it's a calling home, it tries to, to call the Nago server. So this was one of the first patches we did in the first release, we're patching out the calling home functionality. Um, so we, we split the project in, in in four teams, like the core, which consists of the, the old Nagus core, we increased a lot, and the, the old NDO utils, which is the database backend um, of Nagus. Uh, we have the Isinga web, so we decided to develop a, a new web interface. A couple of years ago, we are working on, on a new major step for that at the moment, but I cannot demo it. We have a small team which are which write the documentation, which is important, and we we were in the lucky situation that we found people which want to like to write documentation. <coughs> and then we catch them and they please do it. And they do it. And we have reports. <coughs> um, we decided to use Jasper, so don't develop an own reporting framework. So we use Jasper because it works. And I was the one started with the reporting stuff a couple of years ago, and this was probably the only reporting framework. I know how to write a report with it. That's the reason we choose Jasper. So the architecture is. It's very, very similar to, to this one, Nagus. So this is probably the, the Nagus part. It's not. Um, if you see that, we have that core, we have that ID utils. If you want, write to the database. And if you want to use reporting and the new web interface, you have to use the database. In the Nagus, I think a community, the database is not allowed <coughs> because the utils is crap. Um, I don't know. So. Seeing on OpenNMS, they use Postgres, for example, everyone is happy with it. I think we don't have a good history with databases in Argus and Isinga. Hopefully this change, I think the database is very important for us to, to have good reporting and stuff like that. Um, but we know that a lot of people don't like it. So we have a chance to run without, but then not with the new interface. Um, in the last uh, core releases, so we have a new one in April, I think. We have a lot of small improvements. We don't have a, a big gap to the existing <coughs> Argus, but we have a lot of bless you, a, a lot of enhancement, enhancements regarding um, Nagus, what we have at the moment from the performance perspective, from security patches. So we have a, a long, long list in the wiki where we really um, compare the Nagus to the single state of the moment. Um, and I think if you have a Nagus for now and want to check out a single, just install it in a parallel directory, copy over. 
larger CFP, you move it to a single CFP, and that, that's it. And you start it on, and the world will not change, but will look a little bit better, perhaps. Um, in the classic UI, we, we did a lot of small small tweaks in the, in the beginning. Also, some, some small tweaks Nargis does, and I think implemented for now. Some small things were multi-select of services. In Argus, you, you're not able to, to acknowledge three service problem at once. You have to say, you tap, acknowledge, and then you have a problem with your arm after an hour to acknowledge one of the problems. <laughs> and we have a lot of people say, the only reason migrating to Isinga was because I can do this. So it's not, a, it's not a big one, but just seeing improvements and seeing some things going on was a reason for Sam, uh, to, to, to use it. We have one guy is working for, for German Telecom doing the major work in the classic UI. He works in the DSL department. They're responsible for, for DSL and DSL distribution all over Germany. And they use the classic UI, and he does everything he needs. And at the end of the day, it's in the, in the release, and we're happy with it. Um, in the new web interface, I will demo it a couple of minutes, perhaps, if I have time enough. It's, um, we have two interfaces at the moment. We have a classic UI, which is probably the old C files working on the status and retention that and log files and we have a new one working with the database the new one is um, filled with uh, PHP XJS a lot of JavaScript <coughs> the time we we started developing the new web and um, we web applications so rich internet applications were great and everybody jumps on XJS framework and I don't know we I'm not sure if we do it again I think we won't use XJS for now so because you have a, it looks shiny you have three lines of code and then you have 100 buttons and everyone looks equal. But if you want to move one button to the left for one pixel, then it's getting creepy. So I think we would do it with Bootstrap or something else. Um, and reporting, which was a major improvement for us because it, there isn't an existing reporting solution for Nargis. So there are some other Nargis guys, which Centrion, for example, the, the French guys who have some reporting. Uh, build up on them and customer solutions, but we don't have any detail reporting, for example, where you can have an automated PDF about your service availability, and this is something we created in the early stage of Asinga. Um, Asinga, somebody heard of it? Okay, that makes it more easier to talk about it, because we skipped it. Um, two years ago, we decided we have to, we have to, we have to do major improvements, because Fixing the old core anymore doesn't make us happy. Also, the developers say it's crap to working on old C code, which is 20 years old. We don't want to do that anymore. Then we decided that one of the big problems Nargos and also Isenga has at the moment is the performance. The guy from Bitework, is it right? Bitework told about it, what they do with their own queuing stuff. There are solutions out there where you can do that with um, Mod Gaiman, for example, where you can put all the checks in a Gaiman queue. And there's also something going on in the Nargis corner. So Nargis 4.0 will include some, some worker processes to, to enhance the performance. But we also decided we want to do something on our own. And then we, we checked out what we can do. And then, um, yeah, we evaluated different frameworks and we decided Serum Q would be a good solution to do that. So throwing everything in a Serum Q and then like a cloud, throwing everything in it and it will work, hopefully. Um, like in the cloud, it was an illusion. Um, so we had a lot of problems. Serum Q works, but they have very big changes in every major release. That's something we recognized. And also some stuff we need for monitoring. For example, we have, um, we have master details set up. We have different network zones in, in large environments where you're not able to connect from outside in or vice versa. And Serum Q has specific needs to do that. And then what we did, we we build a library of Con Serum Q, which fits our needs. And then at the end of, of one conference, we introduced Serum Q at the conference in October. And in the same evening, we had beer. And beer is sometimes a good, a good way to solve problems. And then a Swedish guy said, if you, if you write a wrapper for Serum Q, then you are killing all features from Serum Q. That, gives you a chance to adapt and, and, and build a font from different languages. Um, and then, yeah, it makes sense for us. And I saw this picture today, and it was a little bit of that, that feeling I had. Um, 
trip to see the high court. I still found one last week in my in my boxes. So we thought it's it's totally cool if you do everything new in Serum Q and then at the end of the day we introduced it on the same day we killed it. <laughs> and we, we did three three months of work in it, so we had a working prototype at once, but it was the conceptual way was a little bit yeah wrong. And so what we did, we decided to to redevelop the core. So we decided to to write it totally from scratch. Why? There are different reasons. The first thing is scalability. Um, we believe that. 95% of, of users which use Nagus or Async or whatever, they don't have more than 100 or 150 hosts. They don't have a performance problem. So the large setups have performance problems, but not the, the smaller ones. So the huge set of the community has small setups. Um, but we wanna, we wanna keep the easiness of, of the Nagus Asynga because we think that is well, the reason why it's so popular, an ape could write and check plugin. So it's pretty easy to extend, and this is probably one of the major reasons for its success. So one thing is we want to we want to have a solution which fits complicated and large setups, and we want to have something easy which you can run on a Raspberry Pi, which is sometimes not easy to get this together. So what we did, um, we write it totally new with C++. Um, we have, now it works at the moment, it works with every major Linux, Unix, and also Windows, if somebody wants to do that. I don't know. I don't want to, but it works. Um, <coughs> and we decided to change the configuration a little bit. But i show you in the demo how that looks like. So the idea of Isinga 2 is that we have, we have a core, which is probably Isinga 2 core, and we have different components, which doesn't mean that you have 20 processes on the machine like Oracle database. We have a log writer, a database writer, and a sysadmin alerter. Um, so we decided to have components which are loadable in the configuration. So you can decide in a small setup. So which we see the major, the major setups are very small. We have just one configuration, one process, and everything is running in the process. And if you have more of it, if you want to distribute checks and having replication and want to write your performance data on a different node, you can do it, but you not have to configure 20 components. So how does it look like? The idea is we have the core, we have a compat module which provides the old data, fills up the old database schema. We will change that in the future. I think we will update it perhaps in two years. Um, we will provide a live status support. Somebody knows live status? It's a, a mod. Nobody knows it? Okay. One and a half people know it, so it's like <laughs> this is a lot. Um, it's, a, it's a way to, to gather data out of the Nagus or Isinga core directly without going to the database or parsing the, the files. Um, this is an add-on existing now for Isinga and Nagus. We integrate the RP directly into the core that you can exit it. So for for old, old users, for existing setups, you have the feeling that you're using the same, the same interface is working on that, but you have the features upon it with the models. In a distributed setup, it could, like, could look like this. So we have perhaps multiple cores, some, some core is only replication and checking, so not more, perhaps in a distributed setup you only have a, a small piece of, of service in a, a specific data center, you only want to do checks and not more, then you have, for example, um, an Isinga core process just writing the performance set and put it in an RD graph. And then you have an Isinga component which writes to your database or to your application. So you can distribute it um, very good and hopefully it works. So the software I show you is um, it's from October last year. Yesterday I asked the developer, um, can I use the new actual Git version? And then he said it should work. And then I decided to show the old one. <laughs> because should work leads me definitely to a sec for now. Um, so everything is in the Git milestone 2, which means that we solve everything Nagus provides out of the box. We want to provide for the new version is ahead and comes around Easter, depending on family activities of our developer working on that. Um, and we hopefully release the final version in October this year. This is the target, and I think we're in a good way. So this is all but it's working. 
which is very good for the demo. <coughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay, okay. So, um, just give you an impression, I have two virtual machines, two virtual boxes. Um, I'm going to that one. And just give you a look on the configuration. So, one thing you see that we don't have a base configuration like in Nagus, we have the Nagus CFG, everything um, from base configuration of the core, also like service definitions could be in one configuration file. We just have a global repository of configuration. You can put everything in 200 files, you can put everything in one file, it's totally independent. Um, what you see here that, um, for example, we have that the base object is a single application, it's is probably the, the minimum you have to configure. Everything is, is configured in components, like the checker, it has more parameters at the moment, you can perhaps Later on, it will give you a chance to check specific host groups in specific cores, for example. But at the moment, it's a lot more than saying the core at the load time, please load the component. We have the delegation process. I'll show later on what is going to happen. Um, we have the combat IDO, which writes all the stuff to the database. And everything is included in one file. So we're going down a little bit. Since we changed, we removed some, we removed some base um, elements for configuration. For example, the check command definition, which is available in Argus, and I think we removed that because it doesn't make sense. Because the only thing you use it is for writing four lines of code and then reuse it in a service definition, for example. So um, don't be afraid. We have a transition script for configuring everything configured in one to two. So there will be a way to, to use your old configuration there. Um, you need one own micro. That's yeah, really yeah. So you can put your old configuration in there because we're absolutely clear that if we don't give the, the existing users an, an, an easy chance to just just test it, then we will lose them. So we, we will deploy both versions the next two or three years. So we think of one and two, but we will give them an easy way to to test it. And yeah, there are so many tools and modules and and CMDB, Perl, X, Prep. Which generates Nagus configuration, it would be it would be cool if we, if we skip it all. <coughs> um, what you can see it looks a little bit uh, different. Like like service definitions we use in template, you can enter everything in one in, in like a dictionary, and everything is declared as you write it. So for example, if you say in this host, it's in host group number one, you don't have to declare the host group number one, it's declared if you configure it. So you can you can use it by now. I started, I hopefully started, just giving you an idea. So this is no magic happening, I know that. Okay, <coughs> this is out. It's a classic UI. So in the pending stages, So just configured a couple of services, not nothing specific. Um, and you see a lot of locks. Let's forget it. I have some sample configurations. Um, something I want to show you in the time, which is a little bit limited, is um, for example, we want to distribute um, some service checks to another machine, which is pretty easy. We only have to add. <coughs> So for example, um, I have to add some certifications. Um, we, use, we decided to use certific certificates to be honest to each other. I don't know if it's the best way, but it works probably good. And then we can configure a node for that. We configure a port, which gives us a chance to, to work for different core processes together. Um, you don't have to, to be allowed from going from outside uh, so the inside configuration, you can start the connection wherever you want to. So this is totally free and open. And that's it. Not more. You just have to say here's a node. This is the same machine. It 
just see that I, I have an identity, a single C1 with a port. That's it, nothing more happens. And I have the same, the same over here. The second side isn't active, so it's, an, it's another virtual machine. Check out the configuration over there. So this is the configuration on the second node. And here, for example, I just have configured the, the endpoint, which runs on the same port, but it's totally independent. And I've just configured a checker component. So the only component I configured in this course say, I want to do checks, nothing more. Don't write perf data, whatever else. And, and I have this combat idle, but this is commented out. So the only thing this core component does is checking. Copy that over. I'm too, too much Excel. <coughs> okay. So you can see on the first machine, we have a new subscription. So we think that two is subscribing to the core process and say, okay, I'm here. And then he's sending over all configuration he has to that node. Totally stupid because there is no configuration on it. And then you can also see the service on the side. Do you understand? Do you, can you follow me? Because I'm not sure if I can follow myself. But <laughs> you can? Okay, great. Um, so what are you saying is you configure one machine. Yeah. <coughs> And but you do the monitoring on another. Yeah. And the machine that's being monitored tells the other machine this is what we need to do at hand. Right. That's uh, the one piece of that might be off if you potentially need to duplicate that configuration file. You, you don't have here. And you can you can add a, a third, a fourth, or a fifth node to the machine and then he's doing automatically load balanced for now it's I think it's just run robin and then distributing the checks over machines. Also for the moment what's happening now is that, that the machine number one is also checking because the checker component is still activated. <coughs> if I shut down the machine on number one, for example, the core, because you see in the log bus, it is still checking. I have a very detailed, but rosy logging. Then you can see that the description has gone away. So machine number two detected. My, my configuration host is not available anymore, but he still <coughs> continues to check because you want to do an SLA report after that. And you say after two hours, my my, my remote line comes up back again and I want to have the monitoring information, then you can configure how long you will keep the, the monitoring data. But um, <coughs> the single two core on the second virtual machine keeps on checking. So there is no one configuration. Yeah. Ah, so I found it. Okay. You only have, you only have the, the idea that you have to check. If you come back again, for example, um, we modify the configuration over here. I can disable the checker in instance number one. Hopefully you can do it. <coughs> so it's back up again. Number two recognizes that the core is up, but machine number one is not checking, just receiving the results <coughs> from the core number two. You can do that with every component. You can say on number on core number two, write the perf data over here, do the alerting over here, so it's it's totally distributed for now. Um, and just give you an impression of what we can do here. <coughs> time is um, on machine number one, I have a, a mass host well, I think it's 25,000 on the machine, hopefully it works. That's it. So, shut it down. This is machine number two, I start it up again. Then I stop it here. So I switched over to machine number one. And then enabling the new configuration, which is um, nothing more like 
including the single mass hosts. And I think a mass host is just stupid objects. It'll take a little bit longer. Suppose that we have 25,000 hooks up. I replicate it to number two. No. And you also have it on the other side. So in the current development state, um, on, this, on this working machine, you can replicate about 3 million services um, in about 10 seconds or so. We tested it over ISDN because a lot of people have small lines to their, to their departments. So it works really, really good. Um, hopefully gives you an idea what we're doing at the moment. So. Just coming, coming back for the for the benchmark stuff. This is a machine. I'm not sure. One of the thousand working on that. Give you an idea. We have um, a benchmark over there for an Argus, for an old Argus, and I think it which is only the same, a little bit, a little bit faster than a single, but it's, it's the same performance. Then we have an Argus four, which will have the um, the worker concept now in it when it's released. We don't know when. And then with the Nordiamen, which I told you before, it's the queuing possibility to put all the checks in a queue, where you can see you can have about 400 checks. Um, and this is what the development state, there's a lot of uh, numbers. That's it, it doesn't make sense. But at the moment, we can have about 100,000 on a small workstation with a full core, um, which gives us the chance to do about 1,700 checks a second. Uh, yeah, so that's it. You can, you can try it, it's in the GIF. We have a, a public roadmap, so on dev.esinger.org you can see all the issues. Hopefully the issues not opening up again, but it looks good so far. You can try it out, it should work. Um, what's the milestones for that? Um, milestone 2, hopefully after restore, we have all the time periods, notifications and downtime. <coughs> Everything we have so far in Argus and Isinga. Then milestone three is additional features that we want to improve the, the API history in agents. So we want to reach out with the concept to the machines itself. So we have a lot of options to monitor Linux or Unix source like using SSH or Inertini or NS client, whatever. But we want to also have a direct connect to them if the user wants it. And then for milestone four is plan that we have Integrated business process. You can do that with Nagus and I think they're using add-ons, but we want to have it in there. Um, I reached my time limit. It's okay. So, and yeah, that's it for now. Yeah, just just say it. Okay. Uh, people who are in this room for this talk, but not for mine, which is the next one, um, we're interested in systems and network monitoring. We're kind of putting together a birds of a feather, a bot for tomorrow evening that will involve here. So please plan to join us. Also, also a time tomorrow evening. Oh, yeah. It was just kind of an idea right before this talk. So about six. <laughs> we will hit all our problems. So you see OpenNOS behind me, which is also great. And I would like would love to have some features of OpenNOS in this finger, but sometimes it's too complicated. Um, yeah, looking forward to chat. If you have questions. I noticed on your sample conference they had a whole set of operations, and one of which was this. So, so will it seem to go out and see what this is on the machine and just give you some default monitoring for the wall? How does it work? No. So at the moment, our idea is to have the same, the same check architecture and I think as using plugins. So there are add-ons on the market, like check and pay, for example. You can do that like the own discovery. To be honest, I'm not sure what the best way is. I'm not a friend about discovery because I think it's 
yeah, what it is, I have 1,000 machines I always cover, but do I need them? So you're thinking more in having like a like configure agnostic configuration where you, you need out from a CMDB or from your puppet or chef what to monitor <coughs> and then dynamically generate the configuration, but you don't adjust it dynamically. So at the end of the day, it's stupid executing plugins because we believe in the easy way of monitoring. Okay. Uh, um, okay. One other question is, it's always a little bit of that lag loss. It's looking to see whether things are within certain bounds, critical or whatever. Yeah. But it doesn't actually do the long term recording of how full your disks are and trend analysis. But, but it's already doing the measuring, so why can't it do the others? Is, is that something that you put into a singer? Um, no. Um, there are two add ons for that. There are a lot of add ons, like. There are too many add-ons. So there are PNP for Nargis, for example. You can put all the performance data in the in R D graphs. There's an there's an um, configuration add-on, as a graphic add-on based on a relational database model where you can do that. So there are really, really good add-ons to, to store your historical data in R D, but we decided not to include it in the core project because we won't we won't kill the community outside, and this is what which makes this project I think interesting. We decided for now we have perf data for PNP, which is included in the Singa or a Singa 2. You can just write out files and then PNP grabs it and writes it to RD. Uh, but we also do provide a graphite uh, API, for example, where you can put all the data to graphite and what is other people what they want to use for graphing. That is more the idea we have at the moment. Okay, other plans to still maintain the 1.0 branch of a Absolutely. So at the moment we say minimum for two and a half years. Uh, because most of the people won't migrate in the early in the early months, they just will see, and we don't want to uh, push them away. So we will develop it independently. At the moment, also the the core developers are different persons. So we still have people like Friedrich, really, which is responsible for the core number one, is, is developing in that, and Gunnar is doing the major work on, on the singer two, and then we have um, we have. Different hangouts. Normally, we're just sitting up heads and pipes and doing this crazy stuff in Google Hangout. What do you normally do? Don't discuss things. You're playing with Google Hangout features. Um, but they, you never tried it. I see that because it's really funny. We put on heads. Yeah, we, they come together every week, and so we have a lot of meetings that we we don't go too far. So because we want to lose the the old community, but on the other hand, we think it's time for for doing some improvements and, and thinking in, in more business relations and, and giving a chance to have a complex setup with distributed nodes. But at the end of the day, we want to have an app get installed, I think a two, start up, and that's it. So it must be easy and could be complicated. Perhaps this is, but this is hard to achieve. But I think we're in a good way, hopefully. Right, on that, so thank you very much,